And so previously we've discussed the period and amplitude of the sine and cosine functions. Um, and so now I'm going to take that discussion, especially the one on the period of a uh, sine and cosine, and we'll stick with the sine and then everything for the cosine will be similar. Uh, we're going to take the period of the sine and I'm going to apply that to now, um, we're going to be looking at the horizontal shifting or what we often call the phase shift of a uh, sine or cosine function. Okay, so imagine a sine wave and then you move it down the x-axis a little bit or shift it, you know, left or right either way, um, or a cosine uh, function. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We deal with the translations. Um, that's one of the two. We'll also deal with the vertical later on, but let's stick with the horizontal here for a moment. So if we look at the, if you think about the, uh, the period that we talked about before, if you had a function y equals the sine of x, we mentioned previously that the x, or whatever the argument is, if you think of the argument as the input or the, the inside of the sine function, um, the stuff that you're taking the sine of is called the argument. Okay, and that stuff to get one period is pinned between zero and two pi. Generally, just the sine of x has a period that runs from zero to two pi or a two pi period. Um, of course, it could go from pi to three pi, depending on what points you're comparing, but um, I'm gonna consider zero to two pi. And so you take that, take that argument and pin it in to an inequality between zero and two pi. So um, by doing that, that gives you one period. Now, if that argument is something slightly different, we do the same thing. We just put the argument, whatever it is, in between zero and two pi and then solve for x, and that gives us a new period. Okay, we did this in a previous video uh, where if I had something like y equals the sine of, let's say, three x, then you would just take the 3x, pin it in, in the inequality between 0 and 2 pi, and then solve for x. So you divide out the 3, and the new period would be from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So you'd have 2 pi over 3 period, okay? Well, now what's going to happen is, we're going to not just multiply or divide inside, we're going to do some adding and subtracting as well. Uh, so let's take an example like that. And so let's go with uh, y equals the sine of x um, minus, uh, let's go with something like a pi over 2. Okay, so x minus pi over 2. And so in this example, again, to figure out the period, or more specifically, the starting and end points of the, um, of the sine wave, we, uh, we set this argument in between 0 and 2 pi as an inequality. So we have 0 less than or equal to x minus pi over 2 is less than or equal to 2 pi, okay? And so then I solve again for x, so I would add the pi over 2 to all three sides, okay? Uh, on the left I get what, pi over 2, less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to now 2 pi plus pi over 2. Think about this as 2 plus a half, right? Ignore the pi's for a moment. 2 plus a half is 2 and a half, or 5 halves. So it'll be 5 pi over 2. All right, so now I've got uh, my, uh, my sine wave starting at pi over 2 and ending at 5 pi over 2 for one wavelength. Again, remember the sine always starts this leftmost point is always where it's always an x-intercept. Then it goes up, down, and back up, and ends at this last point. 
So these are the first two, the outer two, uh, of the five key points that we talked about before. The other key points are found by finding the middle of these and then the quarters, right? The, the first quarter and the third quarter. Um, so now we've got pi over two and five pi over two. So if I made a scale of pi over two on my axes, here's pi over two, two pi over two is pi, right? So you got one half, two halves, then you get three halves, three pi over two, uh, four halves is two pi, and then five halves is five pi over two, right? So there's half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, if you reduce them, or one, and then you reduce them. And so that actually gives us our five key points, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and so I have an x-intercept in the ends and in the middle. I have a maximum, again, this has an amplitude of one, so we can apply that information, so there's one, and I'll put negative one on the bottom. So at pi, the first quarter, we'd be up at the max. And at two pi, the second quarter, would be down at the minimum. And so my graph then is shifted over to the right by pi over two, okay? The starting point is shifted to the right and the ending point shifted to the right. But notice also that the distance between them hasn't changed. We just shifted the endpoints down, okay? Um, in fact, all of the five key points shifted down by pi over two. Um, and so we have what we call a phase shift. Instead of starting right at the origin, we start over pi over two units, okay? Now, of course, this sine wave, um, the graph will continue you know, it continues left and it continues to the right indefinitely, right? Uh, the cycle continues. Uh, but I'm just looking at kind of a, a base wavelength that we then copy and paste right and left. Okay, so the shift here ends up being, or ends up coming from the zero uh, and then plus that constant that was being subtracted from the x, right? So this number that we were subtracting before ends up being the phase shift. Uh, that, as a general rule, is always going to be true so long as the argument, the argument of the sign is x minus a number, okay? Um, in your textbook and on my math lab, you will find that that number, um, in our case, the pi over two, is often referred to with the variable d, the letter d. Okay, so if I had something like y equals the sine of x minus d, we would say that d is the horizontal or phase shift of the sine graph. Okay, so d is the horizontal or phase shift of the graph, okay? Um, and that, of course, comes from the idea, again, that you would place this um, argument between 0 and 2 pi, solve for x, so you would add the d, that's where the zero plus D gives me my phase shift. And then you would have what D less than or equal to X is less than or equal to two pi plus D, okay? So that gives us our phase shift of D units. Um, the other thing to notice is the period. I mentioned a moment ago, the period doesn't change, just the endpoints. You can always find the period then simply by subtracting these endpoints. Right? Final minus initial will give us the total length. Um, in our example here, the, uh, let me get rid of some of this work. If I were to take five pi over two and subtract pi over two, well, five pi minus one pi is four pi. So that's four pi 
over two, which is reduces down to two pi. So we still have a period of two pi. The period didn't change, just the location of the endpoints. Okay. And so here, again, if you took the endpoint, the, the final endpoint minus the initial endpoint, 2 pi plus d minus d, the d's drop out and you just get the 2 pi. Okay. But now the question is what happens if we incorporate both a period change and a phase shift? Okay. That gets a little bit more difficult. Um, and there's a couple different ways that you might see these. So uh, the first one I'm going to do incorporates, let's see, let's do y equals the sine of, let's go 2x minus pi, all right, 2x minus pi. Well, here um, I would again take that argument pin it in between 0 and 2 pi, and then solve for x. Well, to solve for x, I've got to first add pi to both sides, or to all three sides. So I'll get my pi, that pi, get that pi, okay? Um, by adding the pi, I get pi less than or equal to 2x is less than or equal to, well, 2 pi plus pi is 3 pi. And then I divide everything by 2. And I get pi over 2 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so now my phase shift is pi over 2. That's where the first point is. The first point is always going to be that phase or horizontal shift. Okay, so that right there is our... And then, the, again, the distance between these two, the first point and the final point, will be my period. So I need to do that subtraction to find that value. So the period is going to be the 3 pi over 2 minus the pi over 2, right? The difference in the two values. And 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is uh, 2 pi over 2, right? 3 minus 1. And that, of course, reduces simply to pi. So now what I want you to see um, is the fact that the, uh, the phase shift, the pi over 2, ends up actually being the ratio of the d and the, the constant there. Um, and the period is remember the period from, um, oh, when we did this before, it was always 2 pi divided by that constant. It's still the same. It's still 2 pi divided by the constant, which was 2 here, okay? Um, okay, so here's sort of a general principle. Uh, actually, before I get to the general principle, I'll show you another way to write this so that everything is a little bit more clear. Um, in the last video we talked about factoring weird things. Here I have 2x minus pi. If I were to factor the 2x minus pi by pulling out, oops, by pulling out the 2, I imagine pulling out the 2 from each of these terms. Well, the first one's obvious, it's just x left over. But then the question is, what would I multiply 2 by to get pi? What do you double to get pi? Well, you would double half of a pi to get pi, right? So you would essentially divide each of these terms by 2 to pull it out. So pi over 2 is the constant. And so now things will start to be a little more clear. When it's in its factored form, we're going to have less work to do with this inequality. In fact, we actually could ignore the inequality, and I'll give you a couple nice formulas. This form, I'm going to give you a general formula. We'll say if sine, the sine of b times x minus d 
if it's in the factored form, if the argument is factored, then your period will always be 2 pi over b, that number on the outside, always. And the phase shift will always be this d value, whatever is being subtracted. Uh, yeah, the phase shift is going to be that d. Now notice this d here and this constant are, are different from the original, okay? The d, like I wrote the letter d in, a, in the last example, uh, is always going to be the constant from the factored form, okay? That's going to be your period, or your, uh, your phase shift, all right? Um, if it's not in its factored form, it's not going to work out. So here, when I factor it, I get the pi over 2, and that ended up being the phase shift, right? The pi over 2. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. Let's run through, we'll run through a couple more examples of this. Um, but now that we have sort of this uh, pattern established, uh, hopefully we have this pattern established, if I were to, oh, actually, let me give you a quick formula or show how these formulas develop and then we'll, we'll cut into a couple more examples. So uh, if I were to run this through with this sine function, take the argument b times x minus d Pin it in between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. This is the general formula. To solve, I've got to divide by the b first to get to get into the x here. So divide by b. Divide by b. No cancel. I get 0 is less than or equal to x minus d, which is less than or equal to 2 pi over b. You can already see the period forming, okay, then we add the D to both sides, right, all three sides really, so then D is less than or equal to X, those drop out, which is less than or equal to 2 pi over B plus D, okay, so here what I want you to see, the phase shift is the D value, just like I said it was going to be, or the horizontal shift. And then the period, remember, the period is found by subtracting the two endpoints. And when we do that, we take 2 pi over b plus d, that's the first endpoint, or the last, I'm sorry, the last endpoint. Subtract off that first endpoint. The plus d minus d, those cancel out, they add up to zero. And you're just left with the 2 pi over B, which is exactly what I said it was going to be, okay? So these two formulas, the phase shift being the D value, the period being the 2 pi over B, when the argument is in factored form, will always occur. And it's a nice shortcut so that you can actually avoid having to go through the inequality to get your two endpoints.